But, so this is what you see here. That's my workbench. And, uh, this was uh, all wood, uh, not wood, it was a laminate workbench that I had had down in there uh, for quite some time. And so what I'm going to show you uh, is I'll show you some of the things I, I have and do, but uh, I'm going to show you how to put that workbench in and we'll talk about some of the advantages and such. But uh, go ahead and read the next slide. Uh, it, it gives you a near perfectly flat surface for building. It's, it's easy to clean up. Uh, and if you want to build a, 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 a built-up wing, you can put a layer of cork down there and stick pins in it, whatever you want to do. Um, so you can build directly on the surface. And you can do it yourself. And uh, the cost could be uh, less than 100 bucks. I uh, purchased, this piece was a piece left over from a kitchen project, but I ended up buying, uh, doing a, 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 another job, and I had to buy a, a, a remnant of uh, granite and I think I let me have a piece that was about this big for like 40 bucks. I was think it was 30 bucks. Uh, now that was a guy down in Gilroy. I don't know if the San Jose guys are as cheap as that, but they got all kinds of, uh, as long as you're not too particular about the uh, color, you can be the next slide. Uh, as long as you're not particular about the color, you can get pretty much what you want. But you can see, I just, if you got a note to make, you can draw it on there and it comes right off the alcohol. Next slide. Uh, my, but the first step is to, to cut and set, set the granite on top of the countertop. So it's not as good as inset. It's just not. Uh, it's a smaller work surface and uh, the air behind the granite uh, catches everything. Next slide. So this is the dimensions of it. It was, uh, the granite was uh, 19 by 72. And again, I had cut it already. And it's kind of rough. It was kind of rough cut when I cut it. Uh, and the counter itself that it's set in was 96 by 24. It was actually longer than that, but that's the area I worked with. So the hardest part was, uh, uh, well, first you get the granite, and you can get it as long, uncut, uh, it, just as long as it has a finished sur surface on it. Uh, and again, it should be 30, 50 bucks. <coughs> Pick the least. Uh, obtrusive pattern that you can. Lighter colors will work better for you. If you get too dark a color, you start losing parts in it. This color works so-so. I, I prefer lighter, but it works so-so. Uh, but before you start doing it, look under, try to figure out what's underneath that counter. That's, that's what cost me a lot of time. Um, because I had to, uh, uh, I, I don't have pictures of it. I, I, I wasn't in the mode of uh, show, and, show and tell this until after I had uh, done some work on it. But when I cut it out, I found that there was a whole bunch of sub uh, wood underneath there that was not flat. I actually had two cabinets that came together, had different surfaces on it. I ended up having to, I cut it out, and it was rough as hell, and uh, I, I had to lay down a bunch of, uh, I used a, you could use stucco or whatever, but something to keep the point loads from that granite. Because if you're doing much work on it, you got a point load of a granite, it'll fracture just like that, and then you got, you got this crumbled granite. So I put a bunch of, uh, uh, I think it was actually uh, sheetrock uh, stuff underneath it to try to give it a flatter surface to, to sit on. Next slide. Uh, oh, you already did. Uh, so you cut the granite with a skill saw. It blades about 20 bucks, I think. Uh, the edges don't need to be finished, but Cut them as straight as you can. It'll pay dividends for you when you. Uh, Is that a diamond diamond edge. blade? What's that? Diamond edge blade. You don't have to go with a, that fifty dollar blade. You can do it with another one. Carbide. What's it? Yeah, carbide, I think carbide. it's carbide. And when you cut it, Jeez. just run, run a little little hose on it uh, to yeah. cool, to keep it cool, mm -hmm. and you know you can you know make a good straight cut with it. But this was a, this had this had a little nooks and crannies that was left over from my kitchen job. So it. it the side I used wasn't perfect to begin with, and it had some little saw marks in it, but it's, it worked pretty well. Um, you can surface and polish it. If you want to do a front edge, uh, you could get a little grinder and some of those wheels on it, because I actually did one in my wife's uh, laundry room. And you can, you can buff it up pretty well, so it looks pretty cool. I didn't do that. I had let, had laid the whole thing into the workbench. Next slide. Uh, so I had a, I had a laminate uh, countertop. That's what I used. Uh, you need a skill saw with a tile blade of some sort. Uh, and I used Bondo to fill around the edges. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use any filler you want. Uh, you can use a resin. Uh, you can use whatever you want. 
and uh, I used a sheet, sheet rock, uh, uh, it was a powder, uh, mixed with water and spread it in there underneath. And you'll need some spreaders and brushes and, of course, alcohol for cleanup. And uh, the optional stuff is the epoxy paint uh, for the surrounding counter, which I did, uh, you can see in there. Uh, wood glue, a wood plane, I used that wood plane way more than I wanted to, I can tell you that. <laughs> and the belt sander was helpful and a wood chisel also. The, the epoxy paint I had, oh, I, it was, it's probably 15 years old. It was white epoxy paint, it was used to uh, paint, uh, uh, blend a, uh, if you crack the porcelain off of a washing machine or something, it was made for that. It was a two-part epoxy. I wasn't sure if it was going to cure or not because I'd had it a long, long time. And on top of that, when I was doing all this, it was 50 degrees outside all day long. And I knew I was going to have a hell of a time curing it, and I did. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up putting a heater with a uh, thermostat inside the cabinet. Uh, so it would get up to about 75 degrees. And it did set enough that day to put the second coat the second day. Was the next slide? And uh, that's some of the stuff I used. You can, you can see, see it there after the first step, the, uh, uh, the, the first coat of uh, epoxy. Is, uh, I don't, no, that may not even be epoxy. I think that's the Bondo and the resin. Uh, I, I feel the Bondo, Bondo works really good. Uh, it, that's the Bondo there. Uh, the Bondo works really good for it because it sets up really fast and hard. And uh, if you don't wait too long, it sands fairly well. And that's what I used for the first coat. I used the uh, uh, West Systems uh, uh, resin for the, for, the, for the coat before I put the, the, epoxy, the epoxy paint on it. Uh, but that's, uh, so you, there's the wood glue. That's the fast set that I used underneath the counter. And then that's the epoxy paint that I used that was 15 year old. I'll show you this. We'll talk about this a little bit more later, and I'll show you. Next. So you cut the granite to size, cut out the countertop, inspect the underside so you know what you're cutting through, plan your support for the granite, which could weigh easily over 100 pounds. I could, I could not lift it up and set it in. I had to lean it against the counter and slide it up, otherwise I couldn't lift it, because I am a weak little hunter. So. So install the uh, substrate for the granite, lay down some wet sheet rock or stucco compound substrate. This will reduce the potential for catastrophic damage. Next slide. So you can see some of the imperfections I had here. This, this one corner, I, got, I, I sanded and pounded and everything else trying to get it inset as best I could, but I had this one stubborn corner on the right that came out really ugly. But you can see there's, a, there's saw marks. Uh, in the, in the thing that chips on the corners and everything. Uh, but next slide. Uh, so you install the granite, fill it around the groove uh, with Bondo. Uh, it needs to be 65 degrees or warmer. Remember, you need to surface this with sandpaper. So when you put the Bondo down, it has some high points. You may, may have to sand it down. After you put the uh, resin down, you may have to sand that too because you want to level with the corners of the, the, the level of the uh, countertop. Uh, and leaving a small depression around it will catch the liquids before they fall off on the front of the, the counter too, uh, which isn't a bad idea. Mask the paint counter, but it could take five days to cure. Go ahead. And uh, that's after the Bondo and the um, uh, the, the first coat of, uh, well, the, the finished coat of the uh, resin that I used, that West Systems resin. Next slide. And then I, uh, ma I masked it off before I started putting, that was the first uh, kind of primer coat on all the crud that, around the edges there. And I, I, tried, I built it up enough where it was, it's, it's actually pretty low, uh, a lot leveler than it looks in this picture and the other picture. Next slide. And that's the corner over there on the top right of it that would look so bad in the other picture. <coughs> so it, it, it came out pretty good. I'm, I'm okay with it. So uh, that's, that's, the, that's after three coats of epoxy. And uh, that's the finished product. So go ahead, next slide, and I'll show you some of the other stuff. What I have here are, uh, these are magnets down here. And uh, they, I mean, they're bar magnets. They're made actually for tool storage. And uh, uh, I used to sell them, so I ended up, this, these are actually chrome plate ones, they're pretty cool. And uh, those work pretty good for holding a lot of your stuff. Um, I think this thing is here. Next slide. 
Uh, okay, so this is, uh, I don't know how you guys use this stuff. This stuff is so expensive, I, I, I hate buying it because it's very expensive. Uh, I've actually found it better online, cheaper online than uh, through the, uh, what is it, uh, the Marine store down there. The West Marine, yeah, mm -hmm. over on uh, where did, you, where did you buy it? Yes, I can't remember the website. If you Google it, I, I think I got it through Amazon. Oh, okay. uh, you'll save about 10 bucks or so for the... For uh, about five, ten bucks for the resin, and about five bucks for each of the hardeners. Uh, so I, you see the scale there. I don't know what you guys use. Uh, you know, these are things that you, when you get the pumps, uh, the, the the pumps come as a kit, and so uh, it, it's five to one. You hold, you pump the, the resin in, one full pump, and then the, the hardener, either fast or the slow, one full pump, and you got your five to one. But God, that's a, makes a whole bunch of stuff. Well, you know, somebody in my jobs are so so tiny. I just hate like hell to, to make all that resin. So, what I did was fill the syringes with uh, resin, fast and slow, and then uh, I put it on a scale, zeroed out with the cup, and I do it by weight, and I do five to one, and then I can make a little tiny quantity, and it works out really well for me. So the, the by weight is a little bit different than it, the it, But I have not had any problem. It's it more is, accurate. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be more accurate by weight instead yeah. of one. Oh, it is more accurate. Yeah. 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 Right here, yeah. yeah, so you can do it by weight, or you can measure it, or the syringe. That's why I do, I do it both ways. It depends on how much I'm making. Uh, if you're just doing a very, very small amount, there's not enough differential weight between five to one to use the scale. So I do the... I do the the syringes. I measure it all out of the syringes, but I do it both ways. Actually, the other way too. So, um, so that's the uh, on the right is the, uh, uh, the yeah colloidal silica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabasil. Uh, what was the old term they used to use? But uh, I'm trying to remember what that thing in the middle is. Oh, that's, a, that's inside of a plastic thing. Oh, that was the other thing. I had this stuff sitting up on the counter. As you can see, I jerry-rigged the whole back of the counter with stuff. And I had a little platform up there with all the, with the resin sitting on it. The damn thing always leaked. I had it on the counter all the time. So I finally put it inside a, a little container. And I got room for everything in there. If it leaks, it leaks in the container. And it's not all over the place. That, I really have, that, that's really worked well for me. Next slide. These are all different vices. <laughs> I got, you know, I just, uh, this is a, the one on the right there is a, a little ball vice, and I had to, it was really poorly made. I, I, I had to uh, work it over to make it work right, but I got it now where it locks down really good. You only have three vices in your life? I have, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Three, three that I can tell you about. <laughs> and then I got the little, uh, the little bag of fire with the little clippy, uh, the, the roach clips on them. <laughs> <laughs> with with uh, uh, with the solder pipe, that may use that quite a bit. And then I just got this is a uh, a, a machinist vice. It's the a little the small one is like I use for a, a I think a, what is it? The drill press. Yeah, that's what I use for the drill press. And then I just acquired this one over here. The vice I had was about one third the size of that, and it was pro it was at least fifty years old. And so I broke down and bought a new vice here recently, and that thing is awesome. That thing, uh, you can beat on it and everything else. I also got a new little uh, workbench for the wood stuff, too. Next one. Next one. That's one of the tools I have. I, that thing is indispensable. You can buy them at Harbor Freight for like 60 bucks now. Uh, it's got a belt sander and the, di the disc sander. That thing is totally awesome. Next slide. Next slide. There we go. Uh, that's my uh, bandsaw. Uh, I use that too. It's a, it was an inexpensive one and everything. Uh, I put the CA up here because uh, it's probably one of the first CAs I've ever used that doesn't plug all the time. Uh, C, to, to me, CA is CA. I know some of you guys will disagree with that, but I, I, it, it's, they're slow, they're fast, they're thick, they're thin, but they make, Loctite makes, uh, in that container, three or four different types. Yeah. And uh, that container, I have gone, I actually emptied a bottle without it, you know, without leave, without it going bad. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle, it absolutely is. So I'm pretty much married to that stuff now. Next slide. 
And that's a drill press I just got. And uh, I don't know how I got by without it. I just got it at Christmas time, and uh, I'm pretty much in love with that. Uh, if you guys do need a workbench and want to buy this workbench, I should have showed the whole picture of it. This was a Harbor Freight workbench. It's about $140, and it's got four drawers in it, and it's solid as hell. Uh, so, uh, next slide. I got toolboxes at the kazoo. The one on the left is, it's about this tall and about this long. The one on the right is about, it's about half that size. And it's full of tools. Bob, I have a question for you. Sure. Do you have a garage? Do you park your cars in the garage? I get two cars in the garage. I got a three car garage, yeah. Right. And I got a Bowflex out there too. So. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was a prerequisite of, of, of that. This is my 50th anniversary this year, so <laughs> having her room for her car in the garage was part of the equation. <laughs> Next slide. Hey, Bob, we're at 53 years, well, we'll be 54 this year. <laughs> and, no, 53 this year. Cars have never been in a car. <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't have to live, that's all. <laughs> no, so, I got a sailplane in mine. <laughs> that's right. So the, 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 the tan cabinet there was a cabinet I ended up getting, and I... I really didn't want it, I really didn't need it. It was uh, something that got shipped to one of my guys and the company rather than taking it back says just keep it, so I did. Yeah. I don't have to live without that either. That's got all kinds of little parts and stuff in it, and servos and uh, that thing's loaded. The one on the right is kind of funny. I, I mounted that, that was a, a uh, uh, that was a golf ball display case that my brother made for me. It's all out of oak yeah. and uh, it's got green, uh, felt on the back of it, and uh, I didn't use it for golf balls anymore, and I didn't have the heart to throw it away, and I thought, you know what, I got all these little crappy little things that I can never find, and I don't know where to put them, so I put a piece of pl a plexiglass, it doesn't show very well in there, but I got a piece of plexiglass on a hinge there, and a little pin to hold the door closed, and now I can put some of these weird things that are kind of cool, and, and I can that see works. what I got, so that's yeah, better throw it away. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Okay, this one I can't... Uh, I, this is the last slide. A buddy of mine that passed away a few years ago when I was taking full-scale flying lessons, he got me this, and I, I still laugh at it every time. And I, I'm sorry I cut the bottom off, but the instructor is telling the pilot, who was sweating like crazy, he says, first let me congratulate you, uh, <laughs> congratulate you on a tremendous landing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there you go, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> uh, oh. End of slideshow. Yeah. Now I just have to build. Do you, do you rent the space out? <laughs> I probably could. I probably could. <laughs>